Method and methodology are two different terms. Method is a uh, way. Methodology is connected to the way as well as the theory. So let's look at what methodology means. Brown, <coughs> in 1994, said that methodology is the study of pedagogical practices. Study. The word is study. When you have the word logy, biology, okay, epistemology, all these things meaning refers to the study. Biology is the study of uh, life. So anything with logic behind means study, okay? Analogy, okay? Psychology, sociology. So methodology comes from the word method. The, re, uh, the, the root word is method. So essentially a study of pedagogical practice. That's what you mean just now. Pedagogical practice is what you do in classroom. What you do in classroom is called pedagogical practices. Use including theory. So not just what you do per se, but also theories underpinning and related research. The how to teach. So not just going to classroom and teach, but also the um, science behind the teaching itself. Meaning when you go into classroom, what approach are you going to use? Then this approach comes out. Are you going to use group work? Then the group work will have the social constructivism related theory where you have to work with your friends to get ideas and knowledge if you want uh, students to memorize that is behaviorist isn't it behaviorism you memorize road learning drills so those are connected to behaviorist theory so whatever you do in the classroom has a theoretical <coughs> underpinning meaning that you don't go and teach Willy nilly. You don't just go, okay, today I'm going to teach this. No, you have to actually think of what kind of theories you're going to use to teach in the classroom that day. So, methodology is actually pedagogical practices, including the theories as well as related research, whereby you go and look at other people's way of doing things in the classroom. Remember, I talked about Walter Lewin. Have you had the chance to look at his videos, some of you? Yeah? So his ways are different. So when we want to be effective, we look at what other people do. How other people teach in the classroom. So those are related research. So teachers are also researchers in that sense. Teachers are also researchers. You have to research. You have to do a lot of study to know what is in. How to... Uh, keep yourself updated with the uh, latest knowledge, for example, especially in terms of technology. Gadgets are getting better, more, more and more uh, extravagant day to day. Nowadays, I think no more using uh, PowerPoints in the classroom. They use blend space, okay? Use called Add Canvas or Weebly. No longer using Blogspot. How many of you have got blogs of your own? Put up your hand. What is the software, sorry, what is the site that you use usually? Blogspot, Tumblr, um, uh, sorry? Live Journal, any more? WordPress, no longer use that. People are using Weebly now. W E E B L Y, I'm using Weebly. So, you know, you have to get update, uh, updated. If you use things like, uh, if you want to do videos, you use YouTube. Vimeos, Kick. People are using extra normal now. Go animate. Where you don't have to use your own face. You can use other people's face, but you can use your own voice. So these are the things that are, are very advanced. You will see these things more in the technology lecture. I'll be giving you, I'll be exposing you on more um, up-to-date, not software, but uh, tools, social networking tools that you can use in your TNL, teacher and learning. Okay, so that is what methodology is. Actually, a study of pedagogical <coughs> practice, including theoretical underpinnings and related research. Approach. So, Vivian said just now is the way to do the how. That's basically what she said. But let's have a look. 
theoretical beliefs on the nature of language and language learning with the applicability. This is the most important word in uh, approach. Applicability. When you have the methodology, you apply it in the approach. So it becomes something that you do. That's what. Uh, that's where Vivian was right. Something that you do in classroom. Okay. So you apply it in the setting. Can you see the difference now between methodology and approach? Yeah. The methodology is used in the approach. Okay. And the next one is method. It becomes more specific. Method is generalized set of classroom specification. Your lesson plan is already your method. Because uh, you already have a very specific categories. Okay? Tailored to meet learning objectives. So, method is something that you do in class and it has to come with learning objectives. So, it has to be tailored to whatever learning objectives that you have uh, prepared. Like what Effa and um, Fatin did just now, you have a few learning objectives. Your learning objective is to let the students develop their uh, skills, reading skills. For uh, Vivian and Izni, their learning objective was to let students um, express themselves, respond to the text. So learning objectives are different according to the lessons. Primarily concerned with teachers and students' roles and behaviors in class. This is method. The what. Methodology is the how. Method is the what. What is actually in the classroom. So these are the things which are specific to methods. Technique. Are you getting confused now? Yes? No? Can you see the difference? Okay. Technique is how you carry out your method. So, the, the, the umbrella term is methodology. Can you see now? The umbrella term is methodology. Under methodology, you have approach. Under approach, you have method. Under method comes technique one method can come uh, sorry one method can consist of different techniques okay so today as i say if you are going to use the suggestopedia method your techniques may be a variety of techniques in one classroom can you see the layers now okay so the top layer is methodology and the last layer is technique so technique is the small small things that you do in the classroom. For example, the role play, what well, is a technique? Uh, what you did just now, uh, question and answer, is a technique. Pair work is a technique, not a method. Okay. So a technique is a variety of activities, exercises, and materials in the language classroom to achieve the set learning objectives. Okay. So now you can see the differences. Yeah, and they are not the same. Okay, the two, the four things are not the same. Some people may say, ah, approach, technique, method. What's the difference? Now you can tell them the difference. There is actually differences. Okay. So in classroom, you use techniques. One method with different techniques. Okay. When we talk about the four terms. We have to talk about principles of language learning since you are teaching language. Okay? The first principle is cognitive. You remember this? Automaticity. I'm just refreshing it back. Uh, meaningful learning. Anticipation of rewards. Remember, when we do something, students as human beings, they will always anticipate a reward. Reward meaning it doesn't have to be physical reward. It can also be emotional reward. Praises. Okay, or stars. If you go to primary schools, uh, they, they, they usually give stars to students, isn't it? And then at the end of the year, they will see the students who got the most stars and then they will be rewarded. 
in terms of physical okay so you can do that but it may not work with form 4 student stars you may have to find other things to do intrinsic motivation and strategic investment so these are the things that when you want to learn language <coughs> your cognitive side must have this you must have the automaticity meaning that you you need to learn it automatically the learning must be meaningful that it must be a reason why you want to learn the language uh, there must be some kind of rewards there must be intrinsic motivation intrinsic means the will to learn it comes from within there's no one who forces you to learn how many of you are here because someone forces you to be here all of you are here because this is what you want to do right this is what you want to be english teachers how many of you be honest how many of you choose this because this is the last resort you are one why what was your first choice Uh, as what? As what? It's the same course? It's the same course. Same course means still choice. I was thinking of going to URA. For the same course, that's all. I really wanted to go to URA. And then it's just a choice of place. But you are here. This is Apex University. And then I, I wasn't thinking about being Apex or not. I was just thinking of going to that place. But not doing other course. You are doing a teaching course. Okay. Anyone wanted to do a different course? What what were you first wanting to do? Medic. Pilot. Pilot. What happened? My mom didn't. Your mom didn't allow you. <laughs> so is this being forced? Okay, good. Because you are still, you know, there's still time for you to... Yes. Teaching is a, a profession that needs to be nurtured. It's either you like it or you don't. You know, you have to be in the right mind to be in teaching. This is my first choice. Teacher, teaching was my first choice. I was a teacher. So, uh, when I um, actually when I finished SPM, the first thing I wanted to do was to go overseas. Taking TESOL was the first uh, thing that you can do to go overseas. At the same time, I wanted to be a teacher. When I was very small, I taught my cats. So my cats were my students. So you know, from from, I wanted to be a teacher from I was when I was little. So until now, I'm still teaching. So it has to be, there's a, must to have an intrinsic motivation. That is what it means by intrinsic motivation. Why do you want to do it? The drive. Not because someone else asks you to do it. Not because it's the last choice. Not because teachers get so many holidays, which is untrue nowadays. Teachers don't, go, don't have that much holidays now. And you have more work. So, you know, that drive inside. But being a teacher <coughs> means that uh, there's a lot of satisfaction you can further your studies easier there's a lot of perks you've got study leave you've got uh, scholarships if you go into um, uh, private companies you don't have study leave you don't have scholarship all you have to do you have to use your own money so it's easier to get a master's degree if you are a teacher or you want to be phd holders it's easier if you are a teacher the path is easier so you are in the right profession and the last one is strategic investment. Sometimes we want to learn language because it brings money to us. Uh, there is some, some languages where, for example, French. If you uh, are very fluent in French, you can make a lot of money by giving consultancy or, you know, going to corporate, uh, corporate dinners, being MCs. You get lots of money. So these are the cognitive issues when you are talking about language learning. And then we come to the affective issue, language ego. When you become <coughs> fluent in another language, you will be better at thinking. Your mind will open up further. And then you are more confident, isn't it? You are more confident. You, you can converse with any other people in, on the planet because you've got that language. And you can take risks. And there is 
Another connection that you can do is you can look at other culture, language culture connection. You can look at other culture. You can you can look at how other people interact. Okay, and the last principle is the linguistic principle, where there is a native language effect. Remember, this one is a uh, refresher, where you sometimes are influenced by your own mother tongue. Just now, I remember uh, Ifa or Fatin. Fatin said, "Lah." Isn't it at the end of a sentence? But it's not wrong because that is the native language effect. It's not wrong. It's not something that we say. Oh, you know, you have to speak proper English, Queen's English. It's okay. You are in Malaysia. Queen Elizabeth is not coming here and judge your English. As long as you're fluent, you're good. Okay. So it's okay with that, lah. Don't worry. I I think you were a bit. Uh, you you thought that it was a mistake just now, so it's okay. Don't worry about that. It means that you are <coughs> you have um, the native language effect, interlanguage, where you learn other languages and then you have that interlanguage, communicative competence, and these three are the things that usually influences the principles of language teaching. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, how many of you have got um, one o'clock class? One o'clock classroom, uh, apart from Ava. No? Okay. All right, the next, we will start with the first method. Method, okay? Direct method. Have you heard of this method before? When you were in school, did your teacher talk about this method? No. No. I think they use, they will use it, but they just don't. Tell it to you, or they don't know what it call. It's called. Okay, what is the direct method? Can you give a guess? These are all language, ESL language methods, not other subjects. ESL. So what? What is the direct method? Teacher talk all the time. All the time. Okay. Any other suggestion? Any other suggestion? Okay, let's have a look. Students learn to communicate in the target language. So here we call the target language is English. Right? Learning how to think in the language. Okay, now let's look at your own, own self. When you are in an English classroom, what, what language do you use to think? Malay. And then you have to convert it into English, right? So direct method says you also need to think in the target language. Meaning you cannot think in Malay. You have to think in English. Even the thinking is done in English. So that's what uh, it has something to do with the cognitive part. You have to. You cannot think in your mother tongue. You have to think in the target language, which make things a uh, lot difficult isn't it you think in malay now or in chinese and then you convert to english now you have to think in english which is a little bit difficult no interference from l1 everything you do has to be in english a target language here is english everything you have to do is in english you even have to uh if you if you are sleeping, you have to snore in English. <laughs> ah, you have to dream in English. How many of you dream in English? Can you remember <coughs> last night's dream? Okay, Grace put up her hand. So Grace, you dream in English? <laughs> okay, but sometimes we don't know what language we we dream, right? Sometimes it's just. No language at all. It's speechless. It's just a series of actions. Silent, yes. Do you dream in color? No. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes in color, sometimes not in color. So, you know, what it means is that even you have to dream in English. No interference at all. Objective is 
with the direct method the objective is to teach student to use the language spontaneously and orally so this is for oral proficiency not for writing not for reading it's for oral proficiency so that is why you cannot think in other language when you want to speak you have to think in english okay have you ever dreamt of uh, you know saying something and then actually you are not saying somebody will will uh, wait you are saying you know you are actually saying nonsense yes. but in the dream you are actually screaming or saying something isn't it ah uh, scary uh, and then you sometimes you feel like you are falling yeah huh? and then you wake up ah uh, and then you you wake up sleep in class usually happens like that sometimes the teacher makes you fall okay it actually to link meaning using material so uh, what when you have direct method there must be a lot of real life things you have to use in classroom because you cannot translate no interference you cannot translate at all you cannot use translation cannot use at all no interference so what you have to do is you have to bring a lot of things to make sure the students understand what you mean and the uh, the 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 start the the <coughs> lesson is all always used linking meaning using materials realia and picture because you cannot translate so if you want to show love how do you do it yeah you have to draw the big red heart abstract thing are more difficult to teach through direct method for example if you want to uh, to talk about um, feelings it's very difficult hate how do you demonstrate hate expression. expressions yes you can use video realia facial expression gesture but you cannot translate that's a problem that's a problem with direct method you cannot translate and it's for oral purposes whereby uh, students learn from the way teachers pronounce the way teachers uh, use the language so you have to be very very uh, proficient must be a direct link between concept and language learn so whatever you have to teach the students you have to have a direct link between concept and language so it's very difficult imagine you are teaching a, the last class no translation at all you are teaching uh, you cannot teach essay writing because it's uh, oral so you are teaching for example communication in the market you have to bring a lot of things a lot of um, objects materials so that the student know what is chili what is um, fish <coughs> what is okra oranges brinjals eggplants you have to bring into classroom or you have to bring pictures of them into classroom because you cannot translate okay very difficult and then when when they ask you teacher why why eggplant is like that eggplant egg you you, you show them egg and then you you say eggplant eggplant is um, brinjal some say brinjal some say eggplants so and then the student will ask you teacher why no egg in eggplant how are you going to answer no translation so it's a very difficult thing direct method but it's not to say that you cannot use it in classroom <coughs> you can use it in classroom it's not to say that uh, because this is difficult you cannot use it <coughs> this has been used since the 1960s if you have the book by rogers you can have a look at the uh, history of a direct method it's also known as oral or natural method so uh, when you use direct method it's most most suitable when you want students to be proficient in their spoken language not writing you cannot use direct method with writing it involves speaking and listening activities in realistic environment so if you want them to uh, talk as i say you want them to communicate in market then you have to you have to make sure the environment is as close to as being in a market whereby you have to have fishmongers uh, vegetable sellers there's a lot of role play going on in direct method classroom isn't it you have to have people uh, sells fish 
You have to have people who sells vegetables, uh, dry things, things like that, so that the students are able to uh, to uh, identify what they are learning and what is expected of them to learn. They have to think rather than translate. So no translation, so they have to think. Do you think it's suitable for students who are in the intermediate classroom? Yes. Why do you say that? Okay. They have the background knowledge. They have the uh, schemata. Okay. Can you use it with uh, a very weak class? Not at all? <coughs> Sometimes. <coughs> when you want to teach them very basic things, meaning that you, you have only 10 vocabularies, or you have only 10 sentences, then you can do that. Hello, I am, can I go out, things like that. Then you are able to do that with very weak classes. Very advanced classes, I don't think you have to teach them. Direct method will not work because they've already got the language. Isn't it? So it's better for the intermediate to the weak classes or beginners classes. Right? Learners hear the language before seeing the written form. So who they are going to hear it from? The teacher. The teacher or the materials that you have brought into classroom. If you are using videos or, or songs or or um, <coughs> recordings, they will hear it first. But you have to be careful with the slang. If you use very, very good English uh, as being spoken to by Malaysians or uh, the Queen, then it's okay. But if you take someone's uh, English which is very full of slang, for example, you take um, somebody from Manchester or from Scotland, then it will be more difficult for the student to get the language because it's full of slang. Okay? So you have to be very careful who or how the language is uh, being heard by the students. The best way is by from you, the teacher. That is the best way. Okay? Teachers demonstrate, not translate. So teachers are demonstrators, not translators. So teachers have to model the correct language and it's very difficult because for this method the teachers have to have near native proficiency meaning web 6 ben 6 or ben 5 uh, upper 5 or uh, ielts ben 8 okay because the students listen to you if you say it wrongly they will be wrong and uh, the topics are organized around uh, subjects. For example, uh, as I said just now, communication in the classroom, communication in the city, uh, eating in a restaurant. So there is a spe specific topic that the students have to follow. It's topical, thematical. It doesn't follow uh, sporadically like a syllabus. right? And the key features, okay, if you have the book, you can have a look at the key features. Instruction con, uh, conducted exclusively, TL is target language, in English. No BM or Mandarin or Tamil or other language. Yours is uh, Persian. No Persian. Only English. Only everyday vocabulary and sentences are taught. So nothing of the extraordinary. Whatever you use every day, that those are the only things are taught in the classroom. Oral communication build up in progression. You start with the smaller, uh, simpler things first, and then build up with a more difficult thing. T is teacher, S S uh, is student. Grammar is taught inductively. What is inductive? Inductively Do you teach the grammar first Or do you teach the grammar before uh, Last Inductive Rules first or meanings first 
inductive go and find out you should know inductive teaching and deductive teaching which one is first one is you teach the rules first the, the other one is you teach the meanings first and then you go to the rules so this one is meanings first meanings first inductive because you don't teach grammar you don't teach grammar to them you use the language you model the language so they will follow whatever you say okay I think so. I think it's in that. I I'm also quite confused sometimes. Which one is which? But I think this one is taught because if uh, if I'm not mistaken, direct method doesn't teach grammar <coughs> exclusively. It is taught inside the uh, ex, uh, the communication. But you go you go back and check, and then you can post it up on on uh, Moodle. Um, also uh, on Moodle, I have already posted a forum for next week because there's no class next week. So in your spare time, there's one week. There is a forum about good teacher versus bad teacher. So I want you to put in your opinions in the forum for next week's class. There's no class, so just go into the forum and discuss. Okay. Okay. Back to this. New items are taught through practices and modeling. Uh, so most of the time, the model are the teacher. The teachers are the models. Concrete vocabulary. Taught through demonstration, so you will bring uh, an apple, okay. And abstract vocabulary are taught through idea association. For example, they know about love. And then you want to sh uh, show them what hate is, so you associate with love. Love and hate are opposite two dimension, uh, so you have to uh, use that as a. Uh, how to teach voca uh, abstract vocabulary <coughs> because you cannot bring materials in the classroom right speech and listening are taught together so speaking and listening are taught together it's always the case you don't teach uh, speaking and listening separately because when you speak people listen unless you're speaking on your own unless you're speaking to the mirror uh, then there's no one listening but usually you teach speaking and listening together and it emphasizes on the correction, correct pronunciation and grammar. So I think you are right. Grammar is taught inductively means you teach the rule first. If you look at H, introdu introduce the grammar first. Meaning you have to be correct, grammatically correct. You have to know the difference between present progressive and present perfect. You have to know the, uh, the differences between complementary sentences and adjunct sentences. So those are the grammatical things that teachers have to know. So uh, direct method emphasizes on correct pronunciation. You have to pronounce correctly like just now. Remember? Sheet. And then she changed uh, FR. I think change it into handout. So case closed. Okay, so pronunci the pronunciation is very, very uh, important. Dessert and dessert, okay? Dessert, dessert and desert. Uh, so, which one is which one? Because you cannot show. Okay, and you cannot translate. Alright. Techniques in the classroom. See? Method, techniques. Uh, you, you can now see the differences. Reading aloud. Uh, this is where... Uh, it's not for reading purposes It's for oral purposes Reading aloud Because you are focusing on the pronunciation Question and answer exercises So I ask questions, you answer You have to answer correctly Grammatically correct Pronunciation correct Student self-correction So if they are wrong They have to correct them themselves Conversation, a lot of conversation happening in the classroom of direct method Meaning that you don't have writing classes so much You use a lot of talking time in the classroom Fill in the blanks, very very rigid exercise Do you still do it when you were in school? Fill in the blanks? Yes, yes in your English classroom Very dry, isn't it? Very dry, very boring, very uh, predictable 
and your answers you will have like 10 blanks and 10 answers and you know the last one uh, without uh, the uh, filling the blanks the last one must be the last answer no, no. usually they give more Okay, still confusing, isn't it? Because a sometimes can be the. When is the woman? When is a woman, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, my, usually, kids are not so keen on fill in the blanks. They don't like it. Dictation in this day and age, nobody does dictation anymore. <laughs> in my day and age, there were a lot of dictations. What about you? Did you have dictations when you were in school? You had. Primary school, secondary school. How many of you don't know what dictation is because you haven't done dictation? No. Okay. Dictation is when you have to read a passage. You go back, teacher will give you a passage to read, actually to memorize, not to read, isn't it? And then uh, after a few days, take out your book. Teacher will read from the passage. You will have to answer it in your. Uh, uh, in your book For example Ali went to school So you have to write Ali went to school The, the passage will be from The passage that were given to you Previous day To read And then uh, the answer will, uh, the, the marks will be given On accuracy of spelling And sentence structure That is dictation ah. Okay When I was in school That was the most popular method Grammar and dictation. We even have one exercise book called Grammar and Dictation. I don't think it is there in your in your time anymore. But you still primary you still have dictation. What kind of dictation? Text or text. So very dry <coughs> technique. Students don't like it because it's actually for spelling purposes. There's no Language purpose, just spelling purposes. You can just ask students to spell without dictation, okay? So it, it's a very, very dry, and it's a dying art, they say. It's a dying thing. Don't use it in classroom. Students will die. Not you will die. Students will die because it's very boring, dictation. And it's not, it's very biased because some students cannot hear when they are at the back and it's raining. Or people uh, from the next class is very noisy When the teacher is in front giving dictation They cannot listen, they cannot hear So it's very biased So fill in the blanks and dictation are A no-no in the classroom If you can avoid them Paragraph writing is another one This is not for uh, meant for writing activities This is for spoken activities You imagine spoken activities, you write paragraph also a no-no. So, EFNG is not something that you can practice in the classroom. It will make the students hate you. You know, misdictation they will call you. Okay? Uh, don't, don't do that. The others are okay. Some drawbacks of this method, you have to have small size class. Because most of the time you will be talking uh, and conversationing. So, if you have a 50 class student, you cannot monitor the conversation which is going on. So it gets a little bit havoc. Learners must be very motivated because look at the techniques just now. Okay, it's very boring and very dry. So learners have to be very highly motivated. Usually, this kind of method is taught in language centers. Okay, like British Council, for example. You want to go to overseas? You have the intrinsic motivation. You want to get your uh, IELTS. You go for the courses. They will teach you this way. So that you are fluently in a short time. You will get very fluent in short time. So that's why uh, it doesn't really work with school children. Because they have to be very highly motivated. Teachers must be talented. Because teachers have to do all the talking all the time. Teacher has to have the ability of a near native speaker. As I said just now, you have to have at least Muet Band 6, which is impossible if you are not uh, somebody who, who's not born in Malaysia. So, you know, it's very difficult to have a near native speaker ability. And it's very difficult to, 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 uh, to retain that near native speaker 
ability. So this is, this is one of the drawbacks. So when you go to language classes, language centers like uh, in British Council, most of their teaching uh, of effort, teaching forces are from Britain, native speakers themselves. So they can be able to use this method. Because as non-native speaker, we cannot avoid not thinking in our own language. We cannot avoid because that's our own language. The first thing you do is you think with your own language, your mother tongue. Then only you will teach, uh, think in English. So most of the time, native speakers are the best teachers for this method. Because they will think in their own language and then they will try to let the students do that. Right? Okay, any questions on the direct method? As I say, it has to be done with um, more adult learners. Not quite suitable with um, school kids. Maybe with uh, Form 6 students or with uh, pre-university students or university students or higher education students. Not with uh, secondary or primary school kids. It's very difficult for them. Right? Any questions? Huh? No questions? Okay. Silent way is the second one. Anyone can guess what silent way it means? What is silent way method? Just guess, take a guess. It's okay if you are if you are not right. Reading silently. Reading silently. Anything else? No speaking. Okay. Teacher let students do the speaking. Okay. Anything else? Body language. More on body language. Okay. Do, do you use body language to convey? Okay. Anything else? Focus on grammar and sentence structure. Alright. Shall have a look. It's in the 70s. You were not even born yet. I was born in the 70s. And it originated in the 70s by the late Caleb Gatenio. He's also already passed away. Okay, silent way. Basic tenets or principles of this uh, method is learner discovers rather than repeat or remembers. So, somebody said learner centered just now. Learner do all the things. So, this is what silent way is. Okay, learner discover. Learner is the one who will be active in the method. Learning is aided by physical object. So, there will be a lot of uh, realia brought to class. Real things. Physical object. It is mostly on problem solving type of learning. Centralized on problem solving. Uh, it's quite difficult to learn language through problem solving. Usually, uh, math or science are done through problem solving. English is not so much. Okay, so these are the three basic principles of the silent way. Errors are tolerated. So, what uh, silent way is saying, you know, is part of the learning process. So, you can make errors. Errors are not tolerated in direct method because you have to be correct. In silent way, it's okay. It's natural. Everybody makes errors when you are learning. Student discover the concept rules in the language. So the teacher doesn't tell them anything. The teacher just present things and they will discover it themselves. This is one, uh, it's uh, very, at the very end of a uh, direct method if you if you if you if you uh, compare them direct method is on teacher 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 silent way is more on students 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 okay teacher is just the facilitator so the teacher helps the process students make mistakes on their own students discover rules on their own students learn on their own the teacher just to make things smoother they don't actually uh, teach what is going to be learned. See, they just facilitate. 
uh, students are encouraged to work collaboratively meaning that group work is always always being uh, advocated so you don't learn on your own uh, so that you have friends who can help you because teacher is just facilitator so you have to rely on your friends to correct you you have to rely on your friends to uh, to 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 point out the errors that you make uh, so collaborative work is very advocated in this method students are hope to be able to use the language for self expression so it doesn't say whether it's writing or reading or speaking or uh, listening it just say you can use it for self expression key features learning through discovery i think this type of learning is still being done now uh, self discovery discovery learning problem based learning project based learning and it is originated since the 1970s so this a very long time ago learning is facilitated by physical object learning is facilitated through problem solving so the teacher may give you a problem and you go and make uh, groups get into groups and then try to solve the problem so that's what the teacher try to do through problem solving and teaching techniques sound color chart uh, i don't think we have seen or heard of this before i have certainly haven't seen or heard of this before but uh, this is what rogers and uh, richard says sound color chart teacher silence uh, so i agree with you just now teacher doesn't say a thing students are the one who are talking in the classroom peer correction because of the collaborative work <coughs> students usually rely on your friends can you see a downside of this method when you rely on your friends what will happen yes you depend on your your, your friends to do the work uh, sometimes you get people who are free riders isn't it you, you you do work in groups and then you will get some people who just keep quiet and do nothing what else what else will happen if you totally depend on peer correction yes true your friends may be wrong so it's like the blind leading the blind isn't it the blind leading the blind your friend is wrong you depend on them you are also wrong because of peer correction because the teacher is silent uh, the teacher is giving the authority to the friends peer to to uh, to monitor and correct your friends so it's like the blind leading the blind remember the blind and the elephant eight blind people trying to feel what an elephant is like so uh, the the one who touch the trunk will say wow the elephant is very long uh, and then the one who touch the ivory say the elephant is very high isn't it so it's like that because of peer correction so this is one of the drawback of a uh, silent way when you have friends who correct friends and then sometimes you have friends who like to sabotage you you have that in school isn't it they are right they know they are right but when you ask them they give you the wrong answer so it's very uh, subjective when you when you talk about peer correction peer dependency there are also some drawbacks if the teacher doesn't monitor you uh, it gets out of hand sometimes you will get sabotage right self correction gestures word chart so uh, i think this is also done in school where you have uh, word, chart, word chart or word of the day I think in schools they always use word of the day and then everybody else learn the word of the day and how to use it in a sentence isn't it every day someone has to write on the blackboard what is the word of the day today it's being it's still being practiced now structured feedback so you will get uh, a, a very structured feedback from the teacher or the teacher will give you some sort of uh, questionnaire so that you can uh, fill in when you have finished with your lesson the teacher wants to see how it's like 
some drawbacks to focus on building structure neglect the cultural aspect of the language so language is a beautiful thing you have to learn the meaning you have to learn the history you have to learn the structure as well but with the silent way there's too much focus on the structure not much on other things so the culture aspect of it gets lost you are very focused on the structure and the meaning and the uh, the, the beauty of the language is being neglected cost a lot of time and money uh, if you want to have to do a silent way you have to have a lot of time to do it in classroom 40 minutes is not enough and you have to have a lot of money because the teacher is not there so you have to have a lot of handouts printouts a lot of realias to bring to school a lot of physical objects so in the end it's very costly okay silence of the teacher can prevent students from listening to the correct way of using the language so when the teacher is silent the students do not know whether they are right or wrong they will continue on using wrong language so that is one of the drawbacks of the silent way the teacher becomes silent then finish because the teacher does not say whether it's wrong or right the teacher just listen and hope for the other friends it's not like it's like the teacher is not teaching isn't it silent way means the teacher is not teaching so much so the teacher is not present okay so uh, these are the drawbacks can you think of advantages of silent way take a few minutes and think of the advantage because there's no advantage there i want you to think of advantages of silent way I don't want to be uh, direct method where I'm talking and talking and talking. So you have to do the work as well. So I give you three minutes to talk to your friends. At least come up with one advantage of silent way. Then we will discuss. Less dependent on the teacher. Okay, less dependency on the teacher. Anything else? Yes. Freedom to choose materials. Yes. Ah, dah kena ambil dah. Sorry. Listen to your friends. Generate thinking skills. Okay, we have less dependency on teacher. Generate thinking skills. Ah, material freedom choosing. Yes. Students will be more disciplined. Students will be more disciplined. How? How's that? Okay. You might not, not know the response from the teacher. Okay, but then mistakes are tolerated. Yeah, yeah so it's okay. Uh, Farhana and group? Farhana. Farhana. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, imagination. Uh, freedom for imagination. Okay. Right. Freedom for imagination. Anything else? Yes, motivation for the student. Anything else from the back group? Or yours has been taken already? <laughs> okay, what about you? Uh, Vivian? No. Oh, Vivian is here. Okay. Uh, William? William. Sorry. William is my, my another class. Sorry. <laughs> I've got another student called William. He looks like her. Yes. Students are more responsible. So, <laughs> Prince William. So, where's your kid? Who's your kid? So, yes. There is some uh, good in silent way. And actually, you can adapt them in your classroom. Uh, to a certain extent. Whereby, okay, if you are... Teaching the students, uh, if you are in literature classroom, you can use this method. 
Okay, so the teacher will become very silent. Not very silent, but the teacher will step behind and let the students control the classroom. So there, there are some good in terms of uh, this method. And it doesn't have to cost a lot of money because nowadays there's a lot of materials on the internet which are free. Okay, you can use. Okay, now we come to the next method which is called Suggestopedia. Very nice. Uh, listening name like encyclopedia okay anyone else wants to guess what suggestopedia consists of <laughs> students suggest what to do no it's okay uh, we, students yes point taken again anything else on suggestopedia it's a cyclopedia of suggestion. We're very, very inventive. Anything else? Platform for opinion. Okay, let's see how far you are right. How far you are right. It's also something like the silent way. It emerged in the late 70s. And it's uh, concocted by somebody called... Georgi Lazanov. Okay? Lazanov. Ah, he's a psychologist. <coughs> psychologist. So, ah, some is it closer to what you have thought about? Ah, okay. Maybe let's look at it more. It provides a state of uh, sorry, a relaxed state of mind. Nothing to do with encyclopedia. Nothing to do with suggestion, and it has the 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 key word is relaxed state of mind, because uh, according to Lazanov, remember Lazanov is a psychologist, so he studied the human mind and soul, okay, and he said that in order to learn effectively, your mind must be relaxed. You cannot be stressed. That's true, right? If you are stressed, you cannot learn a lot. So if you want to learn language, you want to acquire language, the best way to do it is in a relaxed state of mind. Okay? And how to do it is to use music. Ah, everyone will perk up. But in this case, it's not rock music. It's not K-pop music. Huh? Ah. It's baroque music. It's a classical music. Uh, you can use Beethoven, Mozart, Gershwin, uh, Vivaldi. Relax music. K-pop is not relax music, okay? I, I don't know. So, uh, my time was people like um, Richard Marx, uh, uh, Michael... Um, Bolton. Uh, those are relaxing music. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know this. This uh, the music nowadays is very difficult to understand. Ah, uh, something like that. Okay, Pavarotti. So those are kind of music that are suitable for suggestopedia. Classical music, Pavarotti, uh, Baroque, Gershwin, Vivaldi. Okay. So these are the uh, what at that time Lazano say you have to use this kind of music, um, but nowadays people no longer listen to this kind of music. You can use instrumental music like Kenny G. You've heard of Kenny G? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yanni. <coughs> Yanni. Okay. Uh, Josh Benson. So this kind of music which is very soft and not annoying. You cannot use Jay-Z in the classroom. <laughs> or or Michael uh Michael Moore, which is rap, you know rap music is not suitable. It has to be relaxing. <coughs> For you, not to the students. Okay, Lazano believe because Lazano believe that this type of music create one kind of concentration level. It's like something like subconscious level 
that facilitates the retention of a huge level of materials. <coughs> They will sleep. Yeah, I mean, there is one exception. Remember the multiple intelligences. Yeah. Yes, there's some who are musically inclined, but not all. So sometimes this may put some people to sleep, yeah. isn't it? <coughs> okay. But this is actually the principle of suggestopedia. Nothing to do with suggestion. Nothing to do with encyclopedia. Giving over. Complete control and authority to the teacher. So, when you have done the silent way, teacher takes a backstage. Now, in Suggestopedia, uh, teacher actually takes over the control. Uh, now, teacher is the authority figure in the classroom. Encourage learners to be childish. So, you can imagine a class like this. It's a fun classroom. Meaning that you have to let the students act, not their age. If they are 11 years old, you know, they can run around the classroom. They can make noise. Encourage learners to be childish. Utilize maximum mental potential. Because Lazanov is a psychologist, all his suggestions are based on psychological effects. Mind and soul. That's why he uses the, the music. But we can use other other things to to uh, to take the music place. You can use other things. You you may want to use the sound of nature. Sound of nature is also relaxing. Okay, uh, you may want to use um, if you are teaching a, a religious school. You may want to choose people who are listen, uh, who are reciting the Quran, for example, or who are me uh, meditating. So these are relaxing. Um, sounds. You don't have to use baroque music. The idea is to get students in a relaxed state of mind. It doesn't matter what kind of sound that you can use, providing it brings them to relaxation and calm state. So you can use a sound of birds chipping, chirping, sounds of water flowing through, sounds of rain. It doesn't matter. As long as they can give a state of calmness. Okay? So it's, it's not necessarily just uh, the music. Objective of this uh, method is to tap into students' potential. Some of you like to learn with the radios on, right? With your MP3 on. I can no longer say Walkman. Do you know what Walkman is? Yeah, yeah some of you do. So. Um, no longer it's no longer being used now. I, I don't find it in, in shops anymore. It's all MP3, MP4 player, isn't it? Uh, Walkman is where you have the cassette player, cassette. You slot in, and then you listen, and then you have to rewind. Uh, that's MP3 player during my time. Okay. Four essential factors of suggestopedia. The first one is there must be a comfortable environment. So, uh, if you are in an environment where it's not uncomfortable, it's very stressful, then you cannot use this uh, method. It has to have some kind of music, soft music, to increase alpha brain waves. So, your brain waves, the best wave is the alpha brain wave, where you learn. Your beta brain wave is when you have the emotion part. So, alpha is where you get your learning done. Okay. The suggestion meaning that usually students have psychological barrier. They are not confident. The most common psychological barrier to students learning is confidence level. Usually they are not confident. They can do it but they cannot they don't have the confidence to do it. They can speak the language but they don't have the confidence. They are afraid that their friends may laugh at them. Uh, teachers may make fun of them. So when you have this kind of uh, environment, Lazano is saying that the psychological barrier will be, will come down. <coughs> okay? Suggestibility, they are also encouraged to be childlike. They are, uh, the classroom is encouraged to, to have fun, 
to have a lots of a uh, lot of laughter, lots of uh, humor, you know, to make it fun. Key features: comfortable environment. Peripheral learning. Peripheral learning means learning with friends, uh, learning uh, without a, a set topic. So uh, peripheral learning means you can you learn uh, whatever you feel like learning. Okay, peripheral learning. Teacher is the authority figure, but teacher controls the class. Whatever it is, the teacher is the authority figure. Teacher has to have a say in the classroom. Self-perceived and psychological behavior are desuggested, meaning that you have to get rid of your psychological behavior when you come into a suggestopedia classroom. Start the students encouraged to be childlike, and uh, baroque music is played softly in the background. It's like um, background song, uh, song when you are learning. Some of you like to have something in the background. Some kind of noise. Some people cannot learn in complete silence. How many of you are like that? I'm like that as well. See, some quite many. Some of you have to learn in complete silence. Who are like that? Some are like that. So it depends. Some doesn't like any noise, so they need to have other rooms. So you have to know who your students are. Some may be like you. You don't like to have songs or sound or whatever. You want to learn in complete silence. So this kind of thing may not be suitable for people uh, like you. So you may have to have a, 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 a separate room for people who don't want to have um, music at all. Okay. Key features again: students work from lengthy dialogues in the target language. So um, teachers will use plays, Shakespeare, drama, uh, things like uh, Romeo and Juliet. Hamlet, okay, things which are uh, lengthy, lengthy dialogues. Errors are tolerated, just like in the silent way. Uh, errors are tolerated. You you can make errors. It's okay. Emphasis on content. It's not emphasized on the structure, so it's more on the content. Students reread the dialogue they are studying as homework. So it's like a drama class. It's like a drama class where the students go back and re-memorize the dialogue they have studied. It's like a drama classroom. Music, drama and arts are integrated in the learning process. So this is like when you are having a literature classroom. You can use this in your literature classroom, not in your everyday English classroom. Right? Techniques, classroom set up. Okay, for uh, according to Lazanov, if you want to have a suggestopedia in your classroom, there cannot be any furniture in your classroom. Hmm. You have to have bean bags, so that the students can lie on the bean bags or sit on the floor. There cannot be any rigid furniture in your classroom. So, can you imagine it in your own school? You can't do that, isn't it? You have the tables and chairs already organized. So it's quite difficult to put bean bags in the classroom unless you have a, 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 an empty room for yourself. Then you can organize it. But that's what Bar uh, Lazano is saying. You cannot have a set or a fixed furniture in the classroom. Posit positive suggestions, <coughs> visualization, choosing new identity, Role play and recital. So these are all the activities to be conducted in a suggestopedia classroom. So you can see that it comply with literature, teaching and learning. Recitals, poetry recitations, uh, poem recitations, role play, drama like uh, what your friend did just now, Vivian and uh, Isni did just now. So that can be done in a suggestopedia method. Okay. Drawbacks. What do you think the drawbacks are? What do you think the drawbacks are of this method? Or do you think that is there's uh, there's no drawback at all? What's the drawback?
Okay, distracted, not suitable for everyone. Just now, like we say, some may not like the music. Anything else? Let's have a look. Quite impossible. Comfortable learning environment is not readily available in school. Quite impossible for large classes. So if you are teaching 50 students, it's not very conducive, is it, to use uh, to have a baroque or a suggestopedia classroom because you're, you have to get rid of the furniture. And you'll have 50 students lying around in the classroom. And then when you are teaching, suddenly the Nazi comes in. And you know, see all these students lying around. <laughs> like, like homeless people, isn't it? 50 students, imagine in the classroom. Uh, so it's not very, very conducive, especially for large classroom. Uh, you can do it if you have like 20, 15 students, which is very, very rare in public schools. If you are teaching in uh, elite schools, you still have 20 students. Uh, potential, potential, high potential students only also have 50, 20 students. So it's, it's, it's not conducive unless you're teaching 10 or 15 students, which is very, very unlikely. Okay? Some students may not have the intrinsic desire to learn the target language, emotional barrier. Some students may think that this is not a classroom, you know, how can you learn with music? How can you learn not sitting in a proper furniture, proper chairs and tables? Resistant to learning music. For example, some of your friends just now, they say they are not used to uh, learning with noise or sound. Okay, so it may be a, 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 a hindrance to some of those, those who don't want to like, uh, who doesn't like to learn with music. And there's uh, the activities in internal internalization of grammar is the, uh, is not being practiced because you learn more on content. Remember, the feature is more concentrated on content. So grammar rules and vocabulary items are usually often neglected. You don't talk about the grammar rules because most of the time you will talk about the content. Okay? Do you think there is uh, a benefit of suggestopedia to be used in the classroom? Is there a good uh, good aspect? We, we look at the drawbacks. Do you have, do you think there is a, a benefit to it? Yes. Why? One of the benefits? Mm, okay, good. You associate music with certain things, okay? Uh, what any other advantages that you can have with Suggestopedia? You may have, uh, you can also uh, put down the walls of rigidity. Because when students are lying on the floor, they, they, feel as if, they don't feel as if they are learning per se. Some people are very stressful with the word learn or classroom. So when you have this kind of environment, they feel as if at, they are at home. Oh, I can sit on the bean bag, you know, I can, I can lie around while listening to the teacher teach, I can drink, I can eat whatever I want. So it's like in the house. It's as if they are not actually in school. So one of the advantage is like is to have a comfortable environment and it uh, lowers down the barrier, the, the, the stress barrier. Okay? A example of classroom application, <coughs> material presentation, <coughs> primary activation. This is uh, if you are teaching, uh, say, a topic. Secondary activation, primary activation and secondary activation are activities in the Suggestopedia classroom. Okay, there's only uh, three. Material presentation, primary activation, secondary activation. And we can see this. There's one here. Teacher first hands out copies of presented text. Remember, it's like a drama class. There is a text involved. Gives the student a few minutes to scan the pages. Then, he or she outlines the dialogue. Quickly reads the lexical items with their equivalences and explains the related grammar point briefly. So, grammar point is not emphasized at all. 
Following this, the teacher reads the text twice in accompaniment of the classical music are put into practice. So, teacher will read the text twice. After the presentation, there is the first activation stage where the students read the dialogue aloud. Adding spirit, meaning with uh, feelings in through emotional voicing. So, the first thing is the teacher will read the dialogue and then students read the dialogue. Second at the first activation. Second activation is the activities related to the dialogue. The students may be divided into groups and asked to write the script of a job interview or dramatize it. So if you are uh, reading uh, Romeo and Juliet, maybe the, the second activation stage may uh, do something like you have to act. If you are the nanny, what would you advise Romeo and Juliet to do? If you are the police, if you are, if Romeo and Juliet are in the 21st century, what would the best way to do to, to handle their uh, dilemma, for example. So the second activation stage is actually taking out what you are reading into the real life. Okay? But there is no uh, listening and speaking involved. Reading, writing and dramatizing. And the last is to may ask the student to post question by using present perfect continuous tense. So the grammar will come later. There is no actual teaching on the grammar items exclusively. Everything is done in one lesson. This is one lesson. Okay? So the grammar part is the last part, which is very, very awkward if you are teaching a grammar item in Malaysia. So those who are teaching grammar items, make sure the item is presented in the beginning, not at the end. So this is an example of a Baroque... Sorry, I keep on saying Baroque. Suggestopedia lesson You can try this in your class But you have to look at the number of students in your class uh, You may want to do it with your friends Those who have not presented You may want to choose this method and do it in the class It's okay Because you've got uh, only 27 of your friends And uh, you may want them to you know, Lie around on the, on the carpet It's okay so if you want to try and use this uh, suggestopedia method, you are most welcome to. If you want to use a direct method in your presentation, uh, by all means, because there, are, there will be other methods that we are going to learn. And if you feel that that is the most suitable one to, to present your micro teaching, you can use it, by all means do it. Okay? So, at the end, if you look at the three colors, Okay, we haven't covered uh, gra grammar, translation, and audio lingual, so just ignore the blue, the red and the yellow, uh, the red and the green. Look at direct method, blue, speed of learning very very fast because you don't translate. Okay, listening comprehension also very high because teacher models. Okay, but reading comprehension is very low. Don't look at the green and the red. Look at the blue only. Reading comprehension is very low because it's for oral presentation. Speaking capability very high, right? Writing very low, and grammar very high because the teacher is the model. So compare it to the other two. That's actually um, a balance. The rate is high in certain areas. Grammar translation is high in certain areas. Audio lingual is high and low in certain areas, and direct translate uh, direct uh, method is high and low in certain areas as well. Okay, so for example, if you look at audio lingual, there's no writing and grammar as well as reading at all, zero, none at all. You will, we will be covering this after the um, raya haji break. Okay, so there is no one set method which is foolproof, meaning. There's no one uh, error-free method. The best thing is to mix and match. And it all has to depend on your learning objective. What do you want to achieve actually? Do you want to achieve uh, oral competency, writing competency, listening competency, or speaking competency, or grammar proficiency? So these, the, the, the learning objectives will be the one that determines what methods and what techniques you're going to use in classroom. Okay, 
So that comes to the end of the lecture today.